there's no need to adjust your screens. It's this shirt. Welcome back, friends. Happy Monday. I hope you're all doing well. Hey, look. Koozies are back. Uh, a new design from uh, my friend Eric Nolan in Indianapolis. He's the guy that painted the logo over the door at the store there in the Tinker Building. Uh, painted all this hours and whatnot on the glass, but focus. Yeah. Couple of palm trees. Yeah, granted, it's a Midwesterner's in interpretation of a palm tree, but uh, a hammock and uh, a bicycle. And then sensible yet adventurous on the other side. <clears throat> so uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you place an order on the website, well, in the next fill in the blank, and you leave a note on the order, which you can do, and let me know that you're a subscriber on the YouTubes, I'll throw in a koozie or two. How's that? It's the least I can do. Uh, a lot of nice comments about Jane's Scenic Drive. Thank you very much. I'm still in the afterglow uh, of that ride, and it's something that uh, I'm sure I will do again and again. And like I said, if anybody comes to visit and they want to go for a bike ride, that's exactly where I'm taking them. Pardon me. A little verklempt this morning. Um, the, uh, that bird. <laughs> I'm telling you, as close as it looked on camera, on screen, it was closer. And it was huge. It was like a pterodactyl. And I thought it was going to get me. Uh... But man, great ride. And I had a couple questions about why I rode the, the cargo trucker, the trucker, truckosaurus. Uh, and, you know, another question about kind of how I've got it set up, I guess the parts that are on it. And I'll go into that uh, shortly. But first... You know, we all, I think, have had the experience of talking to somebody who we knew and liked and respected and, you know, when they were in their lane and even when they, you know, varied from their lane slightly, uh, they really kind of knew what they were talking about. And then there comes a time <clears throat> when they get into something that you know about and it just, it's obvious that they're not really with it. And you have to make the decision. It's like, do I just let them go? Or do I call them out on it? And most of the time you just let them go. And sadly, I think for all of us, <clears throat> that happened uh, with Adam Savage. Now, most of you, I think, probably know Adam. He was on Mythbusters. He worked at ILM. He's He's got a YouTube channel, and he builds wacky, marvelous things. And he did a video uh, where he was doing a bike restoration, I think he called it. And it became obvious very shortly that he, he was probably going to get by it was going to be okay, but this was not his area of expertise. Um, first of all, he didn't even have a bike stand. He was working on this thing upside down, propped up on a couple of boxes. I've seen this guy build all kinds of crazy... Well, first of all, he's got all that Mythbusters money, one would assume. He could buy a work stand. But he's got this giant shop. He's built all these crazy things. He could have built a work stand. He could have built a work stand and made the clamp Luke Skywalker's damn robot arm. Now that would have been something. And I couldn't even finish watching it. 
it was just, it was kind of depressing to, to, to be real honest. Um, but everybody that's worked in bike shops knows that there's a great majority of their clientele who know how to work on bikes because they took them apart when they were kids. Nod your head. <clears throat> uh, about half of them only mention putting the bike back together again, but all of them talk about how they took them apart. So, you know, I think sadly, uh, you know, th this was one of those instances where, yeah, it was just, it was just kind of upsetting to me. And, uh, you know, hopefully he goes back to building crazy Nerf guns. There was another story about a cyclist who is suing Rene Hearse um, because his Barlow Pass tire, which is 700 by 38 tire, uh, blew off the rim. He was running it tubeless on a hookless rim. And <clears throat> part of the I guess the language in the lawsuit was about how, you know, this guy maintains his own bikes and does everything very meticulously and follows all the manufacturer's uh, recommended specs, et cetera, et cetera. Now, first of all, what else is he going to say? Second of all, he's probably right. He probably does. He'd be in the minority, but he probably does. And I'm not here to cast aspersions on him, the tire company, or anyone but it's a, a teachable lesson, and it's something that I've said before, but it bears repeating, which is, if you are going to run tubeless, the tire pressure recommendations on the sidewall of the tire are for perfect world situations, which means if you're running a 700C tire, that the tire manufacturer's idea of 622 and the rim manufacturer's idea of 622 are exactly, or near as makes no difference, the same. <clears throat> Most oftentimes that's not the case. The tire is either too tight or it's too loose. So you have to go into that with that understanding. Um, and most people run too much pressure in their tires. Again, not laying blame, casting aspersions. I don't know anything other than what I read, but this is my public services announcement to you that if you're going to run tubeless, err on the side of lower pressure, not higher pressure. Yeah. So, why did I run, why did I ride the cargo bike on Jane Scenic Drive? Well, the first thing is, you know, I'm just, I ride that bike so much, and I've said this before, that I'm just very comfortable on it. I've got a lot of experience with long-haul truckers. I've rode them for years. I just really like that bike. I had a pretty good idea of what the terrain was going to be like. That bike's got a 26 by 2.35 Big Apple rear tire in a 20 by two Big Apple front tire. So the gravel wasn't gonna be an issue. Plus I was carrying a GoPro, batteries, the Insta360 Go2, the drone, all that stuff. And instead of trying to split it up between a couple of different bags, I just dropped it all in the basket. Seemed like the thing to do. As to how it's equipped, it started out life as a Raleigh mountain bike. At this point, the only thing on it that's from that Raleigh uh, is the crankset and maybe the bottom bracket. Um, I've got an old XTR rear derailleur on it a set of XTR parallel push V-brakes on the back that I picked up off eBay a handful of years ago. Uh, a 
take off front disc. The front hub was off of a kind of a donor bike. And I put a wolf tooth uh, headset on it because you can mix and match the colors. And I thought that was kind of fun. You know, Paul Thummy with a uh, Shimano bar and shifter on it upside down naturally. Uh, that surly terminal bar, which I've come to quite like. It's still not an albatross, but it's pretty good. Like an old Richie stem that I had laying around. You know, it's kind of a hodgepodge, which is what you would expect on a bike like that. You know, you're taking a fork and you're cobbling it into kind of an existing bike or a frame and then you know, it's, when I see a bike like that, I, I don't expect, like, all new parts and uh, everything to match. I kind of expect a, a hodgepodge, a stew, if you will. So as you're watching this, uh, I have likely posted uh, several pictures from uh, on Instagram. So if you're not following along on Instagram, go ahead and do that. Uh, of the Conkfurter 500, the so-called Conkfurter 500, uh, Fort Lauderdale with my brother and maybe sister-in-law, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to do a little cycle tour around the Fort Lauderdale area, going from place to place eating Conkfurters, which is, in my mind, about as good as it gets. I hope you are all well and uh, that it's getting warmer wherever you are, if you had winter. Thank you for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. I hope something good happens to you today. Till next time, be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can, eat some cock fritters. I'll talk to you soon.